Hey guys, Darren here again from Global Garage. Today we're going to do a Neo Geo controller cleaning video. I have even got a sticker on this one saying it needs a clean. So this one is a little bit unresponsive. Uh, I think the down button doesn't work. and I think uh, button B doesn't work. So it could just need a clean. So hopefully we can just open this up and clean all the contacts. But um, I've got it plugged in here to an AES console in front of me. Um, it's got a game in it and we'll just fire that up and we'll show you what it's doing. So here's the game. Okay, if we start, this is a Japanese one. So left and right are pretty good. Down doesn't respond. Up responds fine. Uh, hang on. Uh, button A. Yep. Let's try not to get killed here. Button B doesn't do anything. Button C. Button C does a little run and jump, so I think that's working as well. So just, just turn that off. Come back to the controller. So yeah, left and right were fine. Up was fine, but down didn't work. Uh, start obviously worked because it started the game. I didn't try select, but uh. Fire the bullets off button A. Button B was meant to throw grenades and that didn't work, so. Uh, and C is like a dash button. I didn't fully test that, but I don't, I'm not sure about that one. And D, I don't think D was used in that game, but you know, we've got to pull this apart and have a look. So I'll get on with that now. Um, and I'll take you through the process. So flip this thing over. Yeah, it looks like someone else has had a go at this. We've got a screw down there. Uh, one in the corner. Yeah, so we've got the four basic Phillips head screws. I'll go ahead and pull them out and I'll show you what's on the inside. Okay, so I've just pulled the screws out. Uh, there's actually a fifth one here in the middle. Mine was missing, so you might need to take that out as well. Uh, and then the base will just lift off. So the bottom lifts off, the front face just stays where it is. And and this is what we've got. You know, the, the cable just wrapped around and connected. I'll just move that a little bit. Um, yeah, look at this. There you go. That is very interesting. I haven't looked at this before. This is, I'm doing this live. So that yellow wire off the B button was just hanging loose. So that's definitely going to be our B button problem. Um, now let's have a look at the joystick area here and see if we can find any other basic faults to begin with. That'll be a quick win. Okay, so everything looks like it's intact. So we'll have to dig a bit deeper into the joystick. So to work on these things is a bit of a pain because you've got the, the joystick sort of sticking out the bottom and it won't sit flat on your bench. So um, I've got a little power supply box here from one of the Global Garage branded power supplies. And I just like to put the joystick in the box and sort of sit it like that. And the whole thing will just sit nicely on the bench, you know, just sort of pivoting on its edge. So here, a little practical tip. Um, okay, so onto this troubleshooting. If you look at the way the joystick operates, the uh, little micro switches in there. So um, you've got to physically look at where the switch is and, w and which terminals connect to what. So if we push, uh, you know, if we push left, for example, which is, you know, that way, and we look at the backside here, it's pushing that micro switch, which is in turn connected to these two pins. So it's actually, uh, these two pins connect to little, um, these little black micro switches, and you'll just have a ground pin, which is gonna be the black, uh, like for example, that one there, a black pin, and and the signal wire, which is actually the, the signal for the switch. So just check you're looking at the right switch for the right direction. Um, so if our down isn't work, if I push down, obviously the stick's gonna push up at the back um, and it actually links to this one up here. So this is the faulty one. What I thought I'd do is before I pull this apart and potentially make a mess of it, I thought I'd just check the basics and we'll, we'll check the continuity. So what I mean by that is if we get our multimeter Just got my multimeter here set to continuity, which is um, to set to logic. I've got a little bit of wire wrapped around the other the pin. I'll show you that in a second, what I'm gonna do with that. But 
If we join the pins together, we get a, we get a beep. So we, we know that point A is connected to point B. So what I'm thinking is if we uh, put one probe here on the, um, on the blue wire, which is, uh, which is the switch. So if we do a basic test and connect the black wire, right? So then as we move the joystick, um, we should get a, a click um, that way, sorry. So as I'm pushing down, we're making continuity. So the problem is not actually in the micro switch. That's working perfectly. I've actually gone around and checked all four and they're all working perfectly. So I don't know if I'm even gonna open that up at this stage and I'd recommend you do that as well. Just check the continuity of, of each one before you go any further. And it's, you know, it's just really a matter of just picking in any order, it does not matter. Just one, one point to the other. Um, you can use the probe or a wire, it doesn't matter. Um, and then, um, you know, and just checking the direction. So, so go around and check all four. Um, so in my case, down isn't working, but the switch is. Okay, then what do we do? Well, unfortunately, the problem probably lies here in the cable. So if we think about this really basically, that blue wire comes out of that switch, goes down here, just sort of gets wrapped around a little cable tie, and it directly enters the, uh, with all the other bunch of wires, which are really fine, by the way, a bit delicate, it goes into the main uh, cable here, and, you know, all the way down. So, unfortunately, I think what's going on is there, there is a break in the, in the cable or in this connector. So what we need to do, and this leads on to a little bit of wire, is uh, just start with one that you know works. So maybe um, I'll just pick this one up here because I know it works. Actually, sorry, pick the, pick the colored wire because the colored wire is the one that travels all the way down the connector. And theoretically, what we're going to be doing is putting one probe on one end of the green wire and the other probe on the other end of the green wire, which, which is obviously going to come to here. Uh, you know, the quickest way is probably just probe every hole until we find it. And there it is there. Probably check that you don't get it anywhere else because that would be a problem. Then you want one socket to work. Okay, so where was it? There. Now you can just look this up on the internet as well. I'll give you a quick look. So on the internet, you'll get a, a very simple diagram of the button layout. So use that to help you troubleshoot it. Just, just search on Neo Geo controller pinout. Pinout's just one word. And you, there's a hundred of these diagrams. They're all, they're all really good. So we've proven that we, we can trace, you know, a good wire from end to end because we knew that direction worked and we could do the same with the pink wire. We could do the same with these ones down here. And, but this blue one, this is our, down switch and this is our problem one so if we just make contact up here and then we go around our connector we do the same thing we should find it but I don't think we're gonna find it right that's our problem. So the reason the down direction is not working is because the signal's not getting to the connector. It's, it's making contact up here in the uh, micro switch. It's sending it down the wire, but the wire is broken. And it's up to us to find out where that break is. So I've just proven that it did, doesn't get to the end of this, this connector. So, you know, sometimes I can break in the wire, usually where it comes out of the base, like around this area. There's a lot of uh, flexing sort of pressure here on the wire and it could honestly be in there. And in that case, you'd have to cut the wire off and re-solder all these connections back to the board. You just literally cut it, strip it back, fan out the wires and, and rerun them one at a time. Pretty easy job, but before you do that, I've got a feeling the problem's actually up here in the connector. This particular one, it's all a bit broken. So the, the, the body here, this hard plastic, should be uh, very firmly squashed and crimped onto this cable to stop, you know, stop 
movement here and it's actually not. It's actually, it's broken a little bit and it's all loose. So I think what's happened is someone's yanked this cord and it's, it's pulled some one or two of the wires off inside or they've maybe twisted it and it's just torn it off. So usually these type of retro console connectors are hard, very hard to open. Uh, sometimes like you can't open them, they're all kind of sealed and the plastic's kind of melted together. But this SNK one, uh, it's got these little three little notch things here and kind of appears like we can we can we can pop this open so i'm just gonna get a, a very small little flat blade screwdriver and see if we can pop this open and uh probably pull this middle section forward so let me just get a screwdriver and i'll give that a go okay so with a bit of uh persistence and a bit of swearing i managed to get that apart so you know, I have done a little bit of damage to the plastic, but it's not too bad. So yeah, a bit of damage right there. But what I had to do, because these clips lock on this side and that side, and there's really not much movement, what I did is I got two small screwdrivers, wedged one under the plastic there, and wedged another one there just to lift this one sort of clean off. So they're sticking out. I had two like that. And I turned it over. And I got the, a bigger flat blade and I wedged that one in the middle, lifted that and, and kind of pulled it all at the same time and I got it free. So it's quite fiddly. I, I couldn't do that on camera. It was just, it was pretty hard. So, and then here we go. The whole thought, whole lot would just slide out and we can see what we're looking at. So we're thinking the blue wire is at fault here. So let's see what's going on. Not as bad as I thought. I was hoping to find a broken wire, but we haven't, so the break could be somewhere else. All right, so let's do a continuity test. So we're on the blue wire, still up here on this end. Um, and we just uh, do the same thing on this end. So let's check, check the blue wire. Yeah, we're not, we're not getting it. So it's definitely making contact, yeah. Right, so I've tested this uh, connector completely and the fault's not here, so, you know, we did all that for sort of nothing, but that's okay, you know, you might you might get lucky, you might come in here and see why it's popped out or it's broken and, and that's obviously where you fix it. Uh, but for me, that's not the case, but I think I have found the break. So if I just put my wire on the back of that blue wire, so I'm still trying to do a continuity test, you know, end to end, down the blue wire. What I've been doing is just squeezing the wire all the way down and where I suspect it is uh, is up here where it, where it comes in through this rubber connector and has a bend there and I was squeezing there two seconds ago and I got a, a, a beat so I'm pretty sure the brakes inside the wire here you know which is a pain and like I said before we might have to cut it and re-splice it but yeah I can't get it to do it now but we might also be able to do a bit of a shortcut. So, you know, if it naturally sat there um, and, you know, it exited the case sort of up the top, there's already a bit of wire there. So, you know, if the brake's here, there's nothing stopping us sliding that back just a little bit, just losing a few centimeters of cable length, opening this casing up, finding the brake, and just tapping off there, running that back to the blue point uh, leaving everything else intact, that's all fine. So that's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, it's either it's either this point or this point where the brake break is. So one of these sharp bends, I'll probably start with this one first because it's, it's closer. Uh, I'll open it up and we'll have a quick look. Get my blade and just finish that off. Try and not damage any wire inside. We don't have to keep this shield at all. We can take that completely off. So might do that and then we'll strip it back further if we need to. Okay, so after a bit of messing about, I pulled off that much uh, shielding off the wire and sure enough, I found the break um, about, about here. So um, it's right, it's really close to the end. So, you know, if you're really fast, you could just snip this off and re-sold the whole thing. But um, the brake was there, the, the, this blue wire was really fragile. It was 
it was uh, not connected. So I've just stripped off some uh, some of the, the blue shielding off that wire and uh, you know, my probes are still on either end and listen, that's our problem. So if we, uh, if we join this back together, I'll just turn the multimeter off so that beeping doesn't drive you mental. All right, so I've just uh, sort of twisted them back together very basically and we'll put some solder on that joint and that'll hold it together. So let me fire up the soldering iron and we'll fix the B button and we'll rejoin the blue wire. And then, uh, you know, this will, this damaged area, we'll just tape up in some electrical tape or some heat shield if you really wanted to. And then we'll just, that'll just sit and hide inside the case. So, okay, so I'll just, I was just getting ready to solder our blue wire back into place, just our, our repair there. I thought I'd take another quick look at this uh, B button area and you know the broken yellow wire and you know in theory we just solder that back on but I decided to do a quick continuity test and I measured from the end of the wire right down to our end connector down in here and lo and behold the yellow wire not only is it not connected up here that's fault one it also had a break somewhere between the yellow wire here in the connector and and the far end so, you know, that's a bit random, but I took the opportunity while this is all kind of stripped apart into a loom. Uh, I just stripped back a tiny section of yellow and just wanted to see if the, you know, continuity between the end connector and my little split or from the split to the end. And uh, to cut a long story short, um, down to the connector is fine. So that's, that's really good. But this little strip here, like this is one continuous little bit of wire, which you can see from this end to this join here, don't make uh, electrical connections. So there's no visible breaks either. So if I just put the multimeter on that little exposed bit of wire, and I just prove that it's working by doing that. If I then touch the end of the wire, which is up here, that doesn't work. So this one little strip of yellow is, is broken somewhere. So. We would have soldered that back together. We would have thought everything was right and it still wouldn't have worked. So, you know, I might be able to feel a bit of a break right there, but I don't really know. I'm just gonna cut this off um, and uh, just put on, solder on a new bit of yellow wire and run it to the terminal. So that should fix that. Just wanted to show you that because, uh, you know, take the opportunity to do the basic t checks. Get your multimeter on continuity and check from one end of the plug right up to the other end of the wire up to the terminal and then push the buttons make sure that the connections join when you push the button so you know and just just go end to end and you know in this sort of scenario when we can see the exposed wires it makes it really easy you don't even need the pinout diagram just literally go by color yellow to yellow green to green blue to blue red to red and just make sure it's got continuity and uh mine all do except um, except uh, the blue and, and the yellow, so crazy, hey? So I'm gonna cut that off, replace the wire, and we'll finish the job off. Okay, so I've just cut some new yellow wire. It's it's a much thicker shielding on this one, but you know I've cut it approximately to the same length, so we'll throw away the smaller bit. Okay, so that's all soldered up in place. Uh, I'll just show you this spaghetti mess of wires. Just put a little solder connection on that blue wire and also on the yellow down there. So I'll just wrap some uh, insulation tape around that. Like I could have slid on a nice bit of heat sh uh, shrink tube, but you know, different gauge wires, it's a bit messy. I'll just use some electrical tape and I don't know why it's green. It's the only one I've had laying around. doesn't really matter. So before we put all this back together, um, Got my multimeter probe on the yellow wire and I'm going to measure right down to the other end. And now we've got a connection. Hey, so that's fixed that. Um, and like I said earlier, just test them while you've got the opportunity. It doesn't matter what the wires do. So for example, you know, that's a brown wire. Let's just find the brown wire on this connector. It's up the end there, right? Right, it's good. Let's do the white wire. Uh, he goes right down there. Third one on that top edge. Button A. Button 
C is the grey wire, so that's right next door. And so forth guys, you know, run around, check your start, check your select, uh, and it's just a good little practice. One little final thing I'll show you before I literally wrap this up is uh, this is light blue wire is unused. What typically happens, you know, when the manufacturer buys like wire, it comes in a number of cores um, and they just didn't need the extra wire. So, you know, you could actually, I could have actually spliced that off the yellow and ran that up there, but you know, I wanted to continue the colors, but yeah, thought that was a little bit interesting. So let's wrap this up. No pun intended. Well, yeah, the pun was intended. Okay, so we just get some tape and start it off and wrap the whole thing up. It's just like a, it's like an engine loom on a car. If you've ever played with cars and some wiring, it's the same sort of stuff. So you just wrap it around and go all the way to the end and then you've got a nice protected cable. And it sort of uh, flexes in one piece with all that tape on, so. You know, I, I individually wrapped the, uh, the yellow and the blue separately. So I just so they got extra protection. So I'll finish that off and I'll show you the finished product. So that's the sort of final position I've, I've settled on. Uh, that's all quite tidy. Just tuck those underneath there. And the green wire will just run around like that and just under that post and it's sort of the correct length. So I think that'll do guys. Let me uh, put the lid back on and we'll give it a quick test. The only other thing I'm going to do before wrapping this job up completely is put a bit of super glue on this end of the connector just to stop it, uh, you know, pivoting and, and sliding in and out and potentially breaking the connectors up here. So, yeah, it shouldn't be this loose. So, uh, you know, just that sort of gap we've got down there, I'm just going to drip some super glue down the wire, spread it all around a little bit and uh, let it set. So, yeah, just to really... Uh, strengthen this whole connector up and that's it the controller is all back together and looking good and uh, let's give it a go let's power it on I'll just skip into it Dr. R. Muckley, next US Army. all right so we got left right up down we got shoot we got grenade oh, there you go B buttons working now I didn't get dash yep everything's good all right, guys, so that, that's it. Buttons are all working, the joysticks all working. And uh, yeah, just some fragile wires and desoldered wires and, uh, and what we went, went through. So pretty easy fix. Um, just a matter of going through and measuring the continuity for each pin one by one. So I hope that was helpful. And as always, I'll aim to post up another video here soon. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Thank you.